This podcast is meant for general health information and is not meant to override any medical advice. All questions will be screened and not contain any personal information. If you want a private consultation, contact us via positivechoice.org or you can contact your provider directly. Thank you and enjoy the episode. Hello and welcome to the Positive Choice Wellness Podcast. My name is Annalise. And my name is Melanie. And we are both exercise physiologists and nutritionists. You changed that up. I know. I did. That that threw me off. I I don't know. (laughs) Maybe our listeners are thrown off too. They should be. Rightfully so. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, it's it's a new year. Maybe we have a slightly different intro. Uh, I I fear change. Okay. All right. (laughs) Next time we'll we'll put it back. I don't think you will. All right, whatever. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, okay, so today I think Melanie and I are both excited to just have a conversation about this. Absolutely. Um, if you are in any of our classes, we've probably touched on this. Um, not just us, but any positive choice class. Yeah, I mean, and if you've had or ever had a conversation with us ever, we probably touched on it. <laughs> So we're going to we're going to talk about the importance of non-scale victories in your weight journey. I love this conversation. It's my favorite conversation. And why is that? Because I don't like the scale. So this is great. <laughs> we we both are in that boat. I don't weigh myself. I haven't weighed myself in God, like a decade. I think someone spit out their coffee. <laughs> I know I am in the weight management industry. I do not weigh myself. Um, And to be honest, since I stopped weighing myself, weight has been a much easier thing to manage. Interesting. Yes. It's almost as if we're groomed to be obsessed with the numbers on the scale. Yes. And at least for me and everybody is different. So you kind of have to determine for yourself what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. But for me, Weighing myself has too much power in terms of how I feel about myself. So when I was weighing myself, it would be like, oh, if it came out good, then um, I felt good about myself and maybe I would continue to make good choices. Mm -hmm. Maybe I might also take it as like celebrate. Yeah. Hey, I did so good. Let's go splurge. Yeah. Um, And then if it wasn't great, then I would beat myself up and eventually I would get myself into a nice little super restricted binging, restricting cycle, Mm -hmm. Um, which both of those things are not great for weight management. And if I told you the same, or if my story would be the same story, but uh, it's basically what I like to say is you're letting the scale define your day. Yes. Which you are not a number, but we'll get to that. It's just, I I understand, I relate, feel the same way because whatever the number said would dictate how my day was going to go. If it was good number, good day. Good, not so good number, bad day. And that's always how it went. Cyclically, didn't stop. Yes, and it is the like least valuable piece of information being in this industry and knowing what we know now absolutely right i mean if we if we are looking at like what you weigh one month and then two months later you weigh yourself and you see it goes up or down that's probably a more interesting valuable number but your day-to-day your week by week can be so affected by so many things and if it is affecting what you're eating, how you're exercising, how you're taking care of yourself, then, I mean... Yeah. It, there's t- so many compounding factors, really. At the end of the day, there's too many different pieces of this moving machine here that are making what we see on the scale happen. So if we define ourselves by one variable, that's it. And if it doesn't go the way we want, that's the end of it. There's so much more to that. And I, I'm so thankful now. I feel like there's this, this shift, societal shift now, where I think not everybody, but a lot of people are starting to realize, oh, maybe, maybe this scale isn't exactly an end-all be-all. Maybe. Mm. At least I'm sensing that with my classes that I teach, but I'm also in a bubble. So I don't know anything about outside the 40 people that I talk to a week or more, uh, probably more than that. But you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> yes. I think the one thing that that I like to tell people is like when it comes to the scale, it's the one thing you don't have control over. Exactly. 
so why would you base your feeling of success on the one aspect that you don't have control over? And we we have touched on this um, in other episodes. So if you want to like dig into this, you know, absolutely go back and, and listen to some of those episodes. But but those episodes, you know, if, if we don't have specifics available for them. So it's not like you can just go search them out. So I can't say go to this number, go to that number because uh, uh, we talk about it so much, I don't know what episodes they're in. But if you've listened to any of our episodes at this point, you'll hear us say this a lot. It, it comes up almost in every conversation we have. So what I think we should probably start with then, obviously, uh, we already defined like dependency on the scale and the number that it represents. So what would a non non scale victory look like? What is that? What what is it? <laughs> What are you? <laughs> okay. So there's an exercise that I do with my classes occasionally, especially when this issue comes up and they kind of voice like, yes, we're, we're having some struggling around our weight. Mm -hmm. So, and everybody's different, right? Yeah. What, what is valuable to you is different. And the first thing that you can do is sit down, think about what whatever your number is. So if you have some sort of like goal weights, write it down. Mm -hmm. Then throw it out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then throw it away. Um, no. So, so think about that. And then I want you to do a visualization activity. So imagine that you are that weight and then imagine what is your life look like? Mm -hmm. What are you doing day to day? What ways do you foresee your life changing in terms of like, are you sleeping better? Are you feeling better in your clothes? Are you happier in your relationship? Are you more confident? Are you able to go up the stairs without being winded? Yes. So what, what does your life look like at that weight? And what you end up with is a whole list of what is actually valuable to you. I like that. <laughs> yes. So like, I'm going to use your example of like, if I'm at my weight, appropriate weight, I can climb a whole flight of stairs yeah. without being winded. Bam. Guess what? That has nothing to do with what you weigh. Yeah. It has to do with how often are you climbing those stairs and are you gaining that fitness? Exactly. And you can gain that without losing a pound. And that is more valuable. Yeah. We think weight is valuable. It's not actually valuable to us. You know, I hear a lot of the time too, just to add this in here, because it drives me crazy when I hear it, where someone's like, oh, my stomach's getting in the way, or this is getting in the way when they try to do a movement. I'm like, no, that's not getting in the way. You're just not flexible enough to do the movement. There's a difference between body parts squishing you in a way that's not letting you do a thing versus the flexibility and there is a point where that is a factor, but the people that I'm talking to, that's not the factor. <laughs> it's your fitness level. Just to be clear, just add my little PSA. <laughs> well, I think that that can be a question that you can ask yourself mm. when you say, um, you know, I can't because. Just question it. Is that true? Is there a different way to do it? Oh, the question, if, is that true? We talk about this all the time. Yeah. If, if my stomach is getting in the way of touching my toes, is there a way that I can like widen my stance to get that flexibility? Mm -hmm. um, if my knees hurt climbing stairs, great. I mean, not great, but <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we've identified that. Yes. Great. Now we can be like, well, maybe for right now, we don't climb the stairs, but we find a different fitness goal to get us moving. Exactly. I, I see this a lot with my classes because th this is something that I find all of us kind of succumb to most of the time, which is we have these unreal, well, I won't say unrealistic, but we have these expectations of what we need to see and where we need to be. And, you know, if, if let, you know, let's say, for example, we expect we should be working out 60 minutes a day, five days a week and being perfect little exercisers, and then you don't do it. And therefore you're a failure, or you only do half of that, or you only do 30 minutes and you're like, I'm not doing enough. You're doing a lot and you have to appreciate what you are doing compared to not doing anything at all. And that's where I think there's this disconnect, right? Because we have these expectations we're trying to meet that are just, you know, maybe they're just too high for you at this point in your life, right? And we have to adjust our reality a little bit sometimes and make it a little bit more um, 
tangible. <laughs> yes. And I think also, you know, going back to, we have this new, now we all have a list of our non-scale victories that are actually valuable to us. I think that also gives us goals to work for that are more about stuff that's in our control. So if we go back to um, looking at weight and being like, what happens on the scale is not 100% in our control. Mm -hmm. And just to define what I mean by that is like, I can say, um, I wanna lose five pounds this week. I had a patient who did this exact same scenario. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every everybody does this, right? They're like, I want to I want to lose one pound a week for the next year. Well, it sounds good on paper. That, that's fantastic. And maybe by the end of the year, it will average out to that. Mm -hmm. But you're not going you're a human being. You're not going to see consistent downs like that because your behavior isn't that consistent and your body's not a machine. Mm hmm. I digress. <laughs> We're not robots is what she's trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> I digress. So that's why, that's why, um, so I want, I want to lose five pounds this week. I can't control the hormone fluctuations, the barometric pressure, the how much you sweat, salt that I eat, how what? I'm sorry. I can control the salt that I eat, but how much my body is retaining water, all of that kind of stuff. I can't control that. And all of that is going to go into what my actual weight ends up being yeah. at the end of the week. But if I want to, I'm going to stay with the stairs analogy. I want to be able to climb stairs, not lose my breath. That is a tangible goal mm -hmm. that I can say, okay, well then I'm going to climb three steps per day every single day. Yeah. That is a hundred percent in my control, yeah. right? I can choose to climb those three steps or I can choose to skip it. And that is power. Mm -hmm. And it's moving towards something that is actually meaningful for you. Yeah. But you know, th and this is probably where I see a lot of people who they're like, well, why bother? Like it's so easy, but that's the point. We want to make it to the point where you're like, well, why wouldn't I? That's so easy. Rather than, no, there's no point. It's too easy. If you're trying to do something, you're not doing it at all. Doing a little piece of it is still better than nothing at all. Yes, absolutely. And that's fine. Okay. So it's too easy. Do more. Well, then do, do you want to do more? When you set yourself up to do more, do you do it yeah. or do you not do it? Ah, so you right? Catch yourself. That, that's the question. We can we can work as hard as we want. We can set as big a goals as we want. Mm -hmm. But then we have to look at the reality. Are we doing it or are we not doing it? And if we are not doing it, we need to back off and we need to figure out a way. How are we going to get yeah. over that that barrier? Yeah, exactly. You know, um, I, I use this as kind of an analogy, you know, especially like as, as far as motivation is concerned, where like our motivation fluctuates, we go up and down, up and down. And sometimes when we're down, I say we're in the emotional ravine, like our motivation ravine, we're kind of down there to get out of the ravine. You don't just jump out like Superman. You don't go wee and jump out of the ravine. You're motivated again. That's not how it works. You have to take baby steps. You have to kind of crawl your way out of the ravine. It takes some time. And these little things that we appreciate that we do that aren't necessarily related to our weight that get us out of this ravine, that's what's going to help us you know, stay positive, stay motivated, stay happy. Because, yeah, it's baby steps. Think about any time you've been stuck somewhere. You don't just like, oh, I'm fixing it now. It's like, no, you got to work a little bit, right? It's not easy. That's why we're employed. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. If this were easy, there would be one book and everybody would be done. Yeah. And then I wouldn't have a job. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this, this, this idea of meeting certain expectations, I think, is really what it comes down to. What we think we should be doing versus the things we actually are doing that still benefit us. But mm -hmm. we don't think they're good enough because it's not what we wish we were doing. And I think when we get stuck on that, mm -hmm. what, what you're touching on, which is our expectation of where we should be, we miss what we're actually doing yeah. and we downplay it. Exactly. So when, when we talk about like climbing out of that emotional ravine, mm -hmm. I love that uh, expression, you by the way. You can steal it. Go ahead. It's yours. <laughs> it just gives such a perfect visual of, of how our motivation plays out yeah. in, in real life. But 
when we miss the actual progress that we're making, we're likely to backslide. Yeah. You, you have to acknowledge all of the non-scale victories. Yeah. And you have to acknowledge all the mini victories yeah. as you go. Because if all I see is the top of the hill and I'm like, no, that looks too hard. I'm missing the fact that I'm like 30% up the hill. Yeah. You, we don't look at that. We just look at what's happened or, you know, where we're at now. Like, well, that didn't happen. Um, yeah. And if I know that I already got 30% up the hill, I can be like, oh, I already did a third of this. I can definitely do the next two thirds. Yeah. Versus like seeing the the two thirds I have left to go and be like, oh, I could never do that. Yeah. Which, you know, th that's why non-scale victories are so important. Because like when we phrase that, not necessarily in terms of hill, but in terms of weight, if you have that goal weight, and let's say you're a third of the way to your goal and you still have two thirds to go and you look at that and go, it's so daunting. I'm never going to get there. And you give up. Mm -hmm. But what have you done? Maybe you start tracking your food. Maybe you started wearing smaller clothes. Maybe you move more. Maybe you eat healthier. Who knows? Maybe you're doing a lot of <laughs> cool, amazing things that you're not acknowledging because you're like, but the scale doesn't say what I want it to say. Yes. But look at what you're doing. <laughs> okay, this is reminding me of um, a patient I had years ago who I loved very, very much. And uh, you have probably had these patients too. And it always starts off with, um, I'm struggling so much with my weight. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, so let's talk about it. And <laughs> this particular patient, he was with me for a while and he's like, I just, the scale's not moving, but, and then he went on to say like, but I'm feeling a lot better and I am off five of my medications. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're telling me that you have done so much progress for your health that you are off five medications. Yeah, that's amazing. And you're in here downplaying it because you don't think the scale has changed enough. Like, this, what always comes up to me when I hear this kind of thing, it's like, but what are we doing? <laughs> I mean, if you if your health is improving by leaps and bounds and you are downplaying it because the scale doesn't look where you're wanting to get like. What are you doing? It's I, well, I want to say ironic. It's funny that you bring this up because this is like almost to a T the exact conversation. And I'm throwing her under the bus because she didn't listen to this podcast. My mother said uh, <laughs> so because <laughs> she's she's lost a significant amount of weight recently and. You know, she'll call me and just be like, you know, like, it's just, I, I, I'm only losing half a pound a week. It's just, why is it not four or five like it was before? And I'm like, oh my God, why were you losing four or five before? That's too much. <laughs> but, she's, but, but she has a very much a ingrained diet culture mentality. But like, she's lost enough weight. She's like, my knees don't hurt. I feel so good. I sleep better. And she's telling all the things your patient was saying to a T. And then and it's like, but the scales, it's, I'm not there yet. And I'm like what are you talking about? <laughs> you just want to shake them. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I'm kind of thinking while you're telling me this story is, well, let's reverse it. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, uh, your scale is coming down mm -hmm. and like with my patient, let's say, okay, so you, your scale is behaving the way that you want it to, but you uh, are on all of your medications and, feel like crud mm -hmm. is, is that what you're looking for <laughs> are you happy right yeah or or your mother like okay so the scale you're losing five pounds a week and uh, your knees hurt and you feel foggy and you drag through life yeah. and uh is 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 that the goal yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> it's it's not it's not the goal mm -hmm. because I, I say this all the time. We think that weight is something that is valuable to us. I mean, it's all over the media. I mean, why wouldn't it be? Right. I mean, Lord knows it's a it's a huge business and people make tons of money off of, um, you know, convincing people that the scale is the be all end all. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's in our value system. It's not in our consciousness. We're like, yes, it's really important. But if you look at your behavior, 
if you look at how well you are able to make these behavior changes, keep the weight off, and if you have ever lost a significant amount of weight, you very well know that you're smaller, your weight is down, and you feel a little bit of pride around that. Mm -hmm. But then you look around and you're like, oh, I'm still just me. I'm not magically better. Why? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Why am I not like fixed? Right. Or something else comes up and suddenly you're not eating healthy. You're not exercising because guess what? The weight's not as important. And I see this all the time, you know, a lot of times on Instagram, but I've also seen it with other patients who they get to their goal weight and they're unhappy. Mm -hmm. They feel like they, they can't live life. They're not enjoying anything. They're not, you know, there's so much just unhappiness with where they're at. And they're like, I thought if I got here, I'd be happy now. And it's like, that's the point. Being a number doesn't necessarily, doesn't, it might, but it doesn't necessarily equate to happiness. And if you think about all the amazing things you've done to get there, that is really where your focus should be, which kind of ties back again to the title of our episode, non-scale victories. But realistically though, yeah, like you need to focus on, all the things the all the work you put in and mm -hmm. appreciate that and value that because the scale actually is just a side effect of what you're doing hallelujah right so remember the number you see on the scale is merely just a side effect of the things you do for your health and the side effect it goes wherever it wants to go you can't predict side effects come on look at your medication bottles can you predict it no what if you don't get that cool good for you like it it is what it is but like, I will always think it's so valuable if you can, you know, exercise and eat healthy and feel better, sleep better, manage your stress and do all these things. And sure, maybe the weight doesn't come off super fast, but if you feel good, that is so valuable. And we have to recognize all that work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And okay, so let's kind of like bring this full circle. So at the beginning of this episode- Throw away your goal weight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throw away your goal weight. Okay, so you're going to make this list of of things that you think your goal weight is are going to accomplish. Okay, so now we have our very specialized list of our mm -hmm. non-scale victories. And then let's make our goals around reaching those non-scale victories. Yes. So if you want to sleep better, I want you to start looking into sleep hygiene. What what can I do to make my sleep better? What can I do to have more energy during the day? All of that kind of stuff. And then we're going to wrap it up with what Melanie just said is take care of yourself and then let the weight come off mm -hmm. as a side effect. It's a whole mindset shift. Create a life that is healthy, mm -hmm. that is joyous, and then allow your body to settle in to the weight that that comes out of that mm -hmm. and if your weight is an issue where you're like no i i really i want to be smaller i will feel healthier better then tackle that but in a way that is encompassing all of these other non-scale victories that are valuable to you yeah and you know it's it's that situation where you might encounter folks who who are a little reluctant if you will want to say we're like well i don't want to exercise i hate exercise i don't want to do that you don't have to you can lose weight without exercising go ahead do it easy yeah. will it make you feel good though that's the question <laughs> that goes back to what's the goal mm -hmm. what's the goal are you are you trying to reach a certain weight regardless of what that looks like or are you trying to be a healthier human being yeah and I think ultimately we all want to be healthy human beings because you just, you feel good. Because health feels good. Yeah. And, you know, there was that old saying that used to pop up back in the, back in the olden times years ago where it's like nothing. Or are we talking like the nineties, Melanie? Not that old. Uh, <laughs> 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 Listeners, did you just hear that? Hush. She called olden times, but no. not as far back as the 90s. I'm saying olden times in terms of where there's that shift in diet culture. But the, the way it used to be phrased was nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. Mm. And I hated that. I absolutely despise seeing that when people would like type it on Facebook or whatever they're doing. Like nothing tastes as good mm. as skinny feels. Mm -hmm. I'm like, 
you eating skinny people what's what's going on here like <laughs> <laughs> well i mean if we're going down that road that's definitely not the truth no but the skinny uh, people would not be the tastiest and you probably go to jail for cannibalism but that's a whole other story uh but that's <laughs> another that's another podcast yeah we'll have one not of those ours no we won't anyway so <laughs> no we're not doing a cannibal podcast but there are podcasts out there for that this is not the one yeah that's that's a fair point uh but you know it's I think that that phrase has been rebranded lately to say nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. Mm. And while I don't 100% love the phrase, I do like the rebranding of it much better than putting skinny in there because the goal there was to be skinny, not to be healthy. Right. Um, But I wouldn't say nothing tastes as good. I mean, I still think chocolate cake tastes great, and I'm not going to deny that. But... It's, I mean, there are just some things you know, that, like... Here's an example of a non-scale victory. You go to, like, a potluck or a party or something, and you eat chocolate cake, and you have one slice, and that's all you have. And you leave, and you're like, all I had was one, and I ate so well, and I just had one piece, and I feel like I got what I wanted. I am happy. I'm fulfilled. I'm enjoying this. That's a non-scale victory! And you don't feel any guilt about it. Yes! Yes. You allowed yourself to have the cake, and the cake was good. And you don't punish yourself with exercise the next day. No, never do that. I you mean, get exercise oof. because it's part of your daily routine, and you enjoy it. Not because you have to make up for having a piece of chocolate cake. Exactly. I mean, I can go on a whole tangent about this, but I just want to say, don't ever use exercise as punishment ever. And if you ever have, think about historically, maybe you're in high school or junior high or college and you had a coach who was like, do this. And if you don't do it right, you're going to do 10 laps of whatever, blah, blah, blah. And that can scar some people from ever wanting to do that activity again because it was used as punishment. So Mm -hmm. you relate exercise to punishment future forward. Remember, find what you like, do what you enjoy, even if it's just a nice stroll through the park. Do what you enjoy and never punish yourself for something you did. Yes. Celebrate the good things you did. You know, even if you go to that party and you had a couple pieces of cake, and you're like, oh, man, I screwed up. I had two pieces instead of one. You know what? You didn't have a whole cake. There you go. Good job. Pat on the back. And in the big scheme of things, you ate some cake. Yeah. This is not a big deal. No. Like, this is not irreparable. It's not immoral. You didn't hurt anybody. I think another non-scale victory is an example of this is allowing yourself to enjoy yourself in a healthy way where you can eat something that isn't considered a health food, like a burger or fries, and you're allowing yourself to do it. And you're not going to go off the rails overboard in this all or nothing. Well, I screwed up. Now I got to eat the whole kitchen. Instead, you're like, I allowed myself a burger and fries. It was great. Now I'm good. Moving forward. Non-scale victory. Yes. Bam. Right there. So taking the power out of, or not shaming yourself yeah. about food. And also, yeah, not giving food that power of control over you. Like, oh, I screwed up, so now I have to eat all the food because food was bad. So I shouldn't be eating food at all. Maybe I'll starve myself. I don't know. Like, there, who knows where your mind's going to go? But remember, being kind to yourself is a non-scale victory, too. Yes. I mean, kind of going back to, like, creating the life that you want, you know, being at peace in mm-hmm. your mind, finding joy in life, yeah. enjoying life. Yeah. Yeah. Those it's, are part of it. And it's not, not always the easiest to do, but when you get there, it's so fulfilling when you do. And it's it's a little, you know, sometimes it's, it, I use the wet spaghetti, you know, spaghetti analogy constantly. Chuck stuff out of wall, see what sticks. You got to try a few things first, but you'll, you'll find your pattern, you'll find your groove. But you have to recognize all the good you do along the way. Even if you fail at the first couple of times, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Another victory is not beating yourself up over failures. <laughs> yes. We could go on and on. I have lots. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think it there it kind of needs to be said at this point in this discussion is that these are not destinations. Mm-mm. So it is it is a progressive behavioral change. Yeah. And um some of this stuff you might have a goal and you know to be like food free or uh, to be joyous around food and that might be a lifetime lesson that Mm -hmm. you are constantly working on and learning and um like melanie has said so many times like progress is the celebration Mm -hmm. it's there there is no if we never get to having a piece of chocolate cake and moving on and feeling guilt-free that's okay too. Yeah. But we can work on it. Exactly. We can be aware and then we can celebrate the fact that we go, oh, 
you know what? I'm feeling guilty about having two pieces of chocolate cake last night. Like, isn't that interesting? Hmm. Pondering that. Yes. Not beating yourself up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on that note, it's about that time. Okay. So we will leave you with try out the exercise. Um, See what you come up with. And if you feel like you want to share, you know we want to hear it. I love hearing about people's stories. Yes. So if you guys do this activity, uh, please put your results, put how it worked for you in the comment section of wherever. Yeah, wherever you're listening to this. Wherever you're listening to it, on the YouTube, on Spotify, on Apple. Um, And then while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and join us online. Um, You can check out all of our stuff at Mm positivechoice.org. And our YouTube channel, which is Positive Choice Integrative Wellness Center. Yes, so much good stuff. Um, I think that's it. So until next time, everybody. Bye.